Anyway, uh, let's just jump into the Word this morning. Before we do this, pray. Father, thank you so much for this time together and um, that we can still gather uh, even when there's snow. Father, we just come to give you worship today. This is a day that we celebrate and we honor you. Uh, with our families, we honor you. And we just love you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we are going to bring you not a, a, it's just total standalone, just some things that were coming out of us in our lives. Um, and you know, sometimes the greatest messages uh, of our lives come from moments uh, that you aren't really that happy with, mm -hmm. you know? Um, what I mean by that is you're maybe it's in a frustrating place. It's, and how many of you know it's in those places where they're, it's hard or in moments that uh, you're maybe in a fight, you know, financially or a fight, you know, even relationally that a lot of times those are the places that you grow uh, the strongest. And so that's actually where this, 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 what we're going to share with you this morning uh, came about. And, um, and Pastor Evans is going to share this morning a, a little bit about something that she was talking. We were talking to our kids. We were on our way back from a basketball game and, uh, and, and we were talking about really perfection. Okay, and this is just kind of the way, um, best way I can describe it to you guys is so many times in our life we we shoot for perfection, and the thing about shooting for perfection, and I'm just very much talking uh, for me and my point of view, is when we shoot for, for for perfection, a lot of times what we leave out is we leave out the God part. We leave out we 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 full on put in our performance and we measure others performance and what ends up happening is we don't hit the mark right and how many of you know when we don't hit the mark it causes us it leaves us falling short or frustrated and really not encouraged there's my Caleb um, and really just not encouraged and Evan's taking him over there to tell him how much she loves him I think but we're just not left encouraged we're left frustrated that we haven't uh, you know got to that point and and almost instead of encouraged to press forward, we're discouraged and to find ourselves in a place that we just don't like. And one of the things that just in this, in the whole, this whole car ride home, as we were just talking as a family that I was discovering is that it's not perfection. It's just as what I heard. It's progress. If we would shoot for progress, we would, instead of just perfection, what would accompany it, it would be um, encouragement, we would see that we're, we, and not only encouragement, but we would have an understanding of where we want to go. Sometimes when we shoot for perfection, we want to get there, but because we don't hit that mark, we find ourselves discouraged and it takes us a little while to get back up and go, you know, go after that spot again. But if it's progress that we're, you know, as we parent, as we walk in love, as we do our marriage, as we, uh, uh, you know, see things in our financial life, in our careers and all these, all these things, if we look in progress, what happens, there's a win because we're making our way. And that's the way that God even has designed us, that we are to make our way, that we're changed from one degree of glory to the next. Like you might, you're not perfect yet. God didn't choose us because we were perfect. He saw in us potential and that potential is he says, you can, I can take you from here and I can bring you to here. And it's going to be through progress. It's going to be through you walking out, through you growing and through you. And this is what he was. He spoke to, to my heart. Anytime I side with him, I make progress. Anytime I side with him and what he says, I make progress. I, uh, for my own, for my own life, sometimes have you ever been in that place where you're just upset? You're up, maybe you're upset at somebody, but then you're upset about how you got upset and how you handled yourself, and you're just so frustrated. And the Holy Spirit's so good that He convicts our heart and He tells us and He, he brings to us what God says, and we have the opportunity to ignore that or to make progress in our relationship, in our parenting, in our finances. You know, maybe you, 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 blew, the, you blew the credit card. Maybe you, you, you spent stuff you shouldn't have. Well, you could just be discouraged, right. or you can say, you know what, I missed it, and you can agree with God, and he'll show you how to get out and go forward. So anyway, we were talking about just um, what does it look like uh, to, to, in parenting, and there was just an exchange. We Actually, I had got hurt by something one of my kids said, and I responded rudely. I was quiet, but I, I was cold. Like I just, I didn't say bad things back, but I just didn't respond. I responded 
cold, like out of hurt, inward. Mm -hmm. And I was frustrated. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to respond. Um, but as we were on our way home, we were having a lot of the conversation. And then Evan, uh, she began to talk. And one of the things that she, she said just so blessed me. And that's what, with all of this that I set up, I just wanted her to talk about God's love for us mm -hmm. and us hearing from our Father, um, not how to measure up, but just his love. And you said that and we were in the car and it just so, it so spoke to my heart. So I just felt like you guys, if you could hear this this morning, uh, it would be such a, such a, uh, a tool for you uh, for tomorrow, for just, man, but to sharing with your friends. It's such a, probably one of the most powerful things I've heard in a very, very long time. Okay, so um, just the title today is called I Love You, which I guess is fitting for Valentine's Absolutely. Day. But um, just um, simple title, but actually very, very powerful. And um, so we're just going to talk about God's love. And um, so we'll start it out like this. What do you think God is most interested in telling you? What do you think God is most interested in telling you? And right away when we hear that, we can obviously say, oh, well, he loves me. Or, oh, well, and it's easy to say what we think. But honestly, if you're to go throughout your day or you're to go throughout your last week. What are you hearing? What are you hearing? What are you hearing? And um, are you hearing about his love for you? Are you hearing what you're doing wrong? What you need to do? Yeah. Oftentimes we don't take a minute to really think like what how we view God or how we view but the whole way we view our Heavenly Father and the whole way we view him um, viewing us really affects everything. everything it's 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 really even what we were talking about it's how our approach this year right. is if we're gonna see the impossible things it's gonna be because we go with God Emmanuel right. God yes. with us and and it is his love for yes. us and our view of him that Right. is everything right. our part in our partnership yeah and just to know like he said god with us and he's with us even when we're messing up he's with us he is with us and that never changes that never and leaves and he's for us yes so um this was an example that i just said but as a parent how often do you tell your child that you love them hopefully you tell them a multiple times a day. Yep. I know we have three boys, and so when we're going off to school, we have Matthew, our oldest now, who's driving. When they're leaving, I we pretty much say the same things. Apply the love of Jesus, wear your seatbelt, and we love you. We love you. you, we love you. Everyone um, says that we love yeah, you. Yeah, going off to school, when you're texting, you usually tell your child, okay, you love, love you, them. Bye. Yeah. When you're walking out the door, when you're um, just throughout your day, when you're tucking them into bed at night, when they wake up in the morning. Every time you get off the phone, like mm -hmm. if, you, if you just say goodbye and you don't say, okay, I love you, bye. It's, you tell them, right. we tell each other we love each other always, every night before bed. Right. It's good night hugs and love you, good night. Right. So it's not just once and it's not even when they're two years old that we're like, hey, honey, I love you. And that's it. So I hope you remember the rest of your life that I love you because I'm never going to tell you that again. Yeah. No, what is it? We continually, for those we love and those we care about, we continually tell them, we love you. I love you. We used to always say, hey, 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 guess what? And they would say, you love me. Mm -hmm. and, that we'd, and that's what we'd tell them. Hey, guess what? Yeah. I love you. I love yeah. you this big. Yeah. Yeah. Just so important. And so the same matter is true. If we're not every day hearing our Heavenly Father, who oftentimes we view as just God, God, and just, should we know God as God of the universe and creator and absolutely, absolutely 100%. But we also have to know God, our Heavenly Father, God, our Father. We are a son or a daughter of God. Yes. And so because he is a good father, he is telling us multiple times a day how much he loves us. And so you know good. what? It's not always just saying, he'll say, I love you, but you can be driving and you could, I know like nature ministers so much to you. You can see stuff outside. And what is that? That that's his creation speaking how much he loves you. It can be a small little thing that you see or that you notice that God does for you. And what is it? It's him showing. It's him telling everything he does. He is love. It says God is love. He's not, he's not just loving. He actually is love. And so for us to understand and to know every day we should be hearing how much God loves us, how much he loves you. And when you are kind of, you know, personality plays a lot into the, these kind of things. But if you 
are very much you know a goal setter or perfectionist or you have a high mark for yourself what you'll be hearing a lot of times is is what you need to do right. and you know and what and and what you're doing wrong mm -hmm. and how you need to get better and but if I'm not hearing you you yeah. said this if I'm not hearing God tell me mm -hmm. that he loves me multiple yeah. times a day I need to question am I hearing him well yeah then I need to look at and say I'm I'm a, I'm not hearing him as well as I think I'm hearing him. But my own my own uh, achievement, my own right. my perfection, my right. own my own bar is is set. Right. And God's not cons not God's not worried about mm -hmm. getting us to where He designed us yeah. to be. Right. He calls those things that are not as though they are. He's bringing us there. Right. He's causing all things to work together. He's right. he he he's that amazing. It's some, we still put so much pressure on ourselves yeah. and. And, and, and in that, those pressure situations, it seems like a lot of times um, we, we, we go it alone, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, so just to hear that our Father, and I want you to hear today, that your Father is continually verbally expressing His love for you. And I wrote that in all caps. He is continually verbally expressing His love for you. So the more we hear His love for us, the more our identity in Christ is solidified. Think about this. The more you know that someone loves you, the more they verbally show that, the more they show that through their actions, through everything about that relationship, it solidifies something. The more we know God loves us, the more we know that he's throughout our day, he is our biggest cheerleader. He's like cheering us on. He's saying, I love you. You can do it. You're my child. I believe in you. And I think so often that self-talk is so defeating. Yeah. It's so defeating because as, as humans, we want to achieve. We want to do stuff. We know our faults more than anybody. Okay. And so our self-talk on the inside just talks us out of God's love for us. But So our heart today was just to um, just really open all of our ears again. And I just wrote these words, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Today, can you hear it? Can you hear God's love for you today? Can you hear? And you know what? This is something that as a father, he wants us as his children to go to him and say, Lord, you know what? I've been struggling to hear your love for me. I've been struggling to know how much you love me because that self-talk is there. The enemy's coming with condemnation and guilt and all that stuff that we can carry. But you know what? I just believe today he's opening our spiritual ears. Mm -hmm. He's opening our um, eyes to see in a new way his love for us and just him wrapping you up and saying man i love you like how much better do we um perform do we perform just yeah just live. go about yeah live our lives knowing we have someone cheering us on we have someone when we look at them who's smiling at us he is not displeased with us he right. is not frustrated with us he is smiling. He is cheering us on. He's saying, you can do it. Did you fall? That's okay. Get back up. And he's there to help us get back up yeah. and to get that butt slap. And there is. There's going. so much trust that's built <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, there is. Yeah, when you know how much God loves you, there's like yeah. whatever you're facing, you have those. It doesn't matter what you're facing or how big it is because you know that he loves you. Yes. And you've, you've seen his love and you've experienced his love and you can, you've counted his love right. time and time again. Yeah. And, and it allows you to walk without all the pressure. He right. says that come to me and, and I'll give you, I'll hook up with you. My, my burden, my yoke is easy. It's light. Yes. And that's one of the times you and I can know and recognize, am I stressed and am I pressed? Because if I'm stressed and pressed, uh, you know, what I mean by that is just like I'm tr all on my own. I, I might uh, not be aware of God's love for me and God with me. Right. And when I'm stressed and I'm pressed so often, what happens is I fall short and I quit. But what God designed and what he has in store for us this year, uh, it's going to take uh, us doing it with him. I, I, I don't know. You, I know you're still going, but can I just stay just for a moment? <clears throat> I was going over some notes um, uh, just recently. And uh, one of the things at the beginning of this year or last year, and actually it was the last service before there was quarantine, uh, Brother Marty Blackwelder shared. And he talked about how God... Uh, what is he, he? He combines personal destinies to create corporate ones. And I look out to, and, and I look, I look around, and I see all all the destinies, all the God-given dreams and destinies, and the things that God he he took all these personal destinies 
And he said, I want you here because your personal destiny is connected to these people to create this corporate destiny that our eyes haven't seen, our ears haven't heard, that's bigger than, than we could do on our own. And I'm just thinking about that even this year for you to just see those things that are in your heart. Get them back out because he loves me, I can. Because he loves me, those pictures he's placed in my heart, because he loves me, yes. I will. Yeah. I will, not just I can, but I will. Because God created me to walk in these things. Yes. And so I, I just even wanted to encourage you this morning, get those things back out. You know, as you see, you know, the snow falling and just like, just almost, I, I love, I, being from Minnesota, I love the snow, she not so much. I love how it just makes things pure. Um, not after you drive and track it all in your house, but there's something about when it first falls and it's on the trees and it just cleans up the mess, if you will, of winter. And I just pray that over our, our, our body and all the destinies that our hearts would just have a clean slate. There would be, it just kind of covers up the confusion and the mess the snow does. And I just, I just believe in that for this and our year and our approach that there would just be such a clarity uh, of the things that God has placed in our hearts and that I was designed to walk in them. So I will see those things that God's placed in my heart because it's a destiny. It's something that he, I don't, I don't, I don't develop, but I discover because he's created in advance for me to walk in these things. And I'm going to do it with him. Right. I'm going to do it with God with us. And I can only do that if I hear mm -hmm. continually that I, lo I love you. Love. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll just say that line again. The more we hear his love for us, the more our identity in Christ is solidified. And I think, yeah, just the more we hear his love for us. So um, our perception of God determines our reception from him. If we perceive that God is more interested in telling us what to do than deepening our connection with him, we won't hear what he's really saying. So if we view the Lord or our Heavenly Father as more a person we're to do stuff for, that's going to severely hinder. Now, are we to do good works for him? Absolutely. But that's supposed to be from a place of fully connected with him, fully knowing our identity in him, fully knowing how much he loves us. So our, um, I remember Brother Marty, I asked him what the, the phrase was that he used, but I think it was Sunday night, maybe, or Sunday yeah, morning. Yeah, change the channel. Yeah, and he said, change the channel. And so I was just thinking about that in view of God's love for us. And oftentimes the channel of self-talk that we're listening to is, you're a failure, the you're a failure channel, the it's too late channel, the you'll always be this way channel, the you can't do anything right channel, the fill in the blank for whatever it is that so the enemy uses. You're a failure channel. It's too late channel. Yeah. You'll always be this way. Yeah. You can't do anything right. Yeah. And it's just that self-talk that just hinders you. And really what that does actually, it's very... Um, Why aren't you there yet? It's very bad because what it does is it shuts you down from fulfilling the purpose that God has for yeah. you. It, it just causes you to go inward. But... Here's the God channel. So switching the channel from the self-talk defeating channel to God, our Heavenly Father, we could say probably a better word would be our Father's channel, is love I channel. love you. I the love I love you channel. The you are my beloved son and daughter in whom I'm well pleased channel. Uh -huh. And I thought of even Peter today. I didn't write down the scripture, but I thought of Peter. And you know when Jesus, before he's about to go on the cross, he tells Peter, you're going to deny me and what does Peter say? No, Lord, I would never do that. I would never deny you. And then um, Peter ends up denying Jesus. And then, you know, Jesus dies on the cross, raises again from the dead. And then he comes back. And so we know that probably Peter was very full, very full of condemnation, guilt, discouragement, just feeling like, man, I've ruined my life. I've, you know, all these people that knew I was a follower of Jesus. And now I just did what I said I wasn't going to do. And just that overwhelming... So much so Grief. that actually when Jesus came to him after he rose from the dead, he took Peter aside privately. And I love this. He took him aside privately and he spoke destiny into Peter because he saw that without showing his love for Peter, Peter would have quit his call. Yeah. Peter would have not done anything that we see Peter doing in the Bible to, to further God's kingdom. And so what came to him that day wasn't... Peter, why did you do that? And what what is your problem? And I can't I see I told you you were gonna deny me. No, what did what did he come? He came with love. 
He came with restoration. He did what? He connected him back to him. Back and to then we sin. see Peter being such a bold, bold witness for Christ. And so that just came to me. He I didn't just think quit that's a on him. God didn't oh, quit on him. He no. said, feed my lambs, yeah. feed my sheep. He said he chose And he him, actually came back. What was amazing is he actually, Peter denied him three times. And then he actually came back to him. And he said, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, of course I love you. And they said it again, Peter, do you love me? He said it three times. And so I just think that's so powerful. Just, just that restoring back of fellowship. God's connection and fellowship. So if we are hearing God but are not regularly hearing from these channels, we are not hearing as well as we think we are. It's not all God says, but if we do hear his love for us more than anything else, we will, uh, else, we will not trust him or further our connection with the Lord. So does he always, he's not just always saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. But even his correction, even things that he brings to us when we are to do certain things or to be corrected, if we know it's from that place of love and we have that solid identity in him, we can receive that and we can do it because it's from a place of love. So this little song that we sing so often, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, doesn't really get much better than that. No. Because we have to know, Jesus loves me. I, and I love that children sing the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Because it's so and foundational. I, I love even the thought of really the Bible, it's his words. And I think yeah. just with everything, even you know today, to you know hearing God say, that he loves you. Hearing in your heart him say, not hearing all the Bible tell, not the song, but hearing him say, I love you. You're my son. You're my daughter whom I'm well pleased. And then us using our words, I mean, on, it's Valentine's Day, yeah. to don't, not just the thought, but using our words to yeah. say, hey, I love you. Yeah. Honey, I love you. Or, or, you know, use their name. Evan, yeah. I love you. <laughs> um, Caleb, I love you. Matthew, I love you. Samuel, I love you. I love you guys. Yeah. And just using our words yeah. and uh, uh, rather yeah. than just our thoughts. And this verse um, I had was Matthew seven eleven, and our heavenly Father is a good parent to us, and it says this: If you love, if you then, being evil, know how to give good good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? And so I think one of those good gifts, one of the greatest gifts that our Heavenly Father gives us is just simply his words to say, I love you. Amen. And so oftentimes when we see this verse, I just saw it in a new way today because oftentimes when we see this verse, we think of tangible, we hear the word gift and we think of tangible things, right? Yeah. Like, especially on Valentine's Day, you know, your spouse giving you a gift. Well, what do we think of flowers or a card or going on a date or these special gifts? And are, are those things good? Absolutely. And does our Heavenly Father want to bless us with good gifts, tangible things? Absolutely. But I think one of the greatest gifts that our Heavenly Father gives us is his words of I love you yeah. and hearing those all throughout the day when you're in the midst of chaos in your house that we would hear he's saying I love you and the words of affirmation yeah and just all throughout our day not just when we're quiet but that's just what I pray is just that our church family and beyond church would just know how much we're loved in that today and all throughout our week this week that we would just have ears to just hear throughout the day and it can be in those most chaotic, frustrating moments. You've lost your temper. You've got frustrated. You're overwhelmed. You're stressed out. And you know what? You hear the Holy Spirit minister God's love to you by Him saying, I love you. That changes everything. It does. And it changes it's from everything. that place that, that we can love other people. Yeah, it's true. Uh, if, we're, if we're hurt, we hurt. Yeah. But if we're loved, we love. We, we love. Yeah. So yeah. Let's, just, let's just pray. Father, thank you so much for your love. We just add uh, we just ask you today uh, to let us hear your, your love for us like we haven't heard it in a long time Thank on this Jesus. day. Let us just know your pleasure, how you take your pleasure in your children. Thank you, Father, thank you for affirming uh, every step. Thank you. Father, for, uh, for picking us up when we've fallen down. Thank you for lighting their path in, in the way for us to walk in, for you cheering us on, for you not, uh, uh, for you not frustrated, uh, but, but you uh, speaking and, and calling us by our potential. You. Father, we just love you so much. Yes. Thank you. We just use our words to tell you that we love you. Yes. Today, we, we tell you that we love you. Yes. Tell, just tell the Lord that today. Maybe it's been a long time since you've 
since you've uh, entered a conversation with him, you, you just tell him this, this morning, Lord, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank, Thank you for loving me uh, where I'm at, but not leaving, not just leaving me, Jesus. but walking with me. Father, we love you. Thank you. We just ask for ears that would hear and know your voice so clearly yes. uh, this week, today, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we also just thank you that um, your love, it says it draws all men. Thank and you. so if you're watching today online and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, you've never received him, we just want to pray that prayer of salvation today and just for you to see how much he loves you. And because he loves you, he's drawing you to him. Amen. And so you just pray this prayer. It just says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, that you will be saved and that you will know where you're going for eternity. So let's just all pray this prayer together. Father, in Jesus' name. I confess, I confess my sins, my sin. and I thank you I thank that you died on the cross, on the cross. and that you rose, you rose again, and you showed me how much you loved me, because you died for me. And so now, I ask you, I ask you to come into my heart, come into my heart to, be my Lord, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, be my Savior. and from this point forward, from this point I am new, I'm new, and I am a loved child of God. I'm a loved child of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.